Good morning and welcome to our Thanksgiving service at the Elevation Church. Thank you for joining us online. Get set for a wonderful time in God's presence as we continue our series on faith, which we have tagged Beyond Ordinary. It's going to be a wonderful time in God's presence, so get comfortable and prepare to engage and be blessed by today's service right where you are. If you have children, we have prepared a special program for them. Simply check our YouTube channel for the link to our children's service so they can also have a great time engaging in God's presence. Our teenagers will be holding their service live on Instagram at 10 a.m. West African time this morning. So please join us by following our Teens Nation handle at TEC Teens. Our chat room is open. I would love to hear from you. So if you have a prayer request or would like to share a testimony or it is your first time joining us online, please let us know by also indicating that in the chat room. We'd love to reach out and say hello and help you out however we can. During the service, you'll be invited to give your offerings online. Please ensure that you do so via any of the channels, whether you are within Nigeria or abroad. We will also be sharing communion during this service, so please have some juice, water, and wafers, biscuits, or bread to partake in the communion with us. Once again, thank you for joining us. Do stay engaged, and I will see you after the service with some closing announcements.
We've come to say thank you for another month. Yeah, we are, oh God, in your presence. Say thank you. Because you are Jehovah. That's your name. That's who you are. Yes, Lord. Jehovah is your name. Oh, Jehovah is your name. Jesus, Jehovah. Jehovah is your name. Can I hear you say Jehovah is your name? Yes, that's his name. In the same God we serve yesterday, today, and forever.
your study, in your living room, just go ahead and just begin to worship him. You've heard other people's song. Don't let distance or anything defy you from worshiping God, from worshiping God. Express your gratitude to him. He still deserves our worship in spite of all. He still deserves our worship. Just go ahead and worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Let words of worship, let words of adoration come from the bottom of your heart to your maker this morning. Father, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. We worship you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have worshiped. In Jesus' precious name, we have worshiped. You are welcome to this online service this morning. And I just want you not to be distracted, not to be focused. God is everywhere, right there in your study, in your living room. God is to be worshipped. And I want us in that attitude to begin to thank God. Today is our Thanksgiving Sunday. It's the first Sunday in the month of April. So I just want you to go ahead and thank him. Go ahead and thank him for helping you to see this day, for waking you up this morning. Thank him, thank him. Return praise, return glory, return adoration to him. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, that I have breath in my nostrils, that I am alive today to thank you. And Lord, I give you praise, I give you all the glory. Thank you, precious Lord. Thank you, precious Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. See, all the prayers that we are going to take this morning is going to be prayers of thanksgiving. The scripture says, in everything. We are not happy about what is going on around in the world, but we must obey the scriptures. He said, in everything, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. So I just want us to go ahead. In spite of all the pandemic, God is still God. And all that pandemic and all the stories that we are hearing will not debar us from thanking him. So go ahead, church. Thank him some more. Thank him some more this morning. Thank him for our nation, Nigeria. Thank you for all that is happening. Yes, it's worse, it's bad, but it's not worse yet. It's not worse, it's not worse. It could have been worse than this, but God is still on the throne. So thank him. Thank him for nation, Nigeria. Thank him for responses that we are giving. Thank you for ideas. Thank you for the will of government to do something. Thank him for all the people that have lending help and to, to, to cut all, to curtail the spread of this. Just thank him some more. Father, Lord, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you glory. Thank him this morning. Thank him this morning. The scripture says in Psalm 145 and verse 21, he said, my mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord and all flesh shall bless his holy name forever and ever. If you are a felt and hell the flesh for that matter, go ahead, let your mouth speak of his glory this morning. Thank him some more. Thank him some more. Thank him some more. Father Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We give you praise. We give you praise. Thank you. Thank you. God, go ahead and begin to thank him for your family. Thank him for your job. Thank him for everything around you. You may, you may not be where you want to be, but you are not where you used to be. So for that, give him thanks. Thank him for your life. Thank him for your family. Thank him for your children. Thank him for your husband. Thank him for your wife. Thank him for everything around you, for your family, for your extended family. They are saved. And all the ones that are everything before you, just begin to thank him from the bottom of your heart. Thank him. Return praise unto him. Return praise unto him. The scripture also tells us, said we give thanks to you, O God. We give thanks for your wondrous works. Declare that your name is near. Yes, your name is in there. I want, just want us to thank him. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. I want you also to know this morning that giving thanks can also be a warfare. We thank you for what we want to see. And then you step out in faith to thank him for what you want to see. I'm sure what we want to see in this land is mighty deliverances from God. What we want to see in this land is mighty healings from God. What we want to see at this present time is solutions, respites that is received to curtail this pandemic. So for that, I want you to exercise faith and step in into thanksgiving mode. Not for what he had done, not for what he will do, not for what he's doing presently, but for what he will yet do. So I want you to just go ahead and begin to thank him. 
Thank him for what he will do. Thank him for the solutions. Thank him for the end of the pandemic. Thank him for the end of the pandemic. Thank him for the end of the pandemic. Thank him. Thank him for restoration of lives. After now, lives will be restored. After now, economies will be restored. So I just want you to go ahead and begin to thank him in advance. Exercise your faith. Thank him in advance. What you want to see, thank him in advance. Thank him in advance. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Thank you for calming our fears. Thank you for calming our fears. Thank you for filling us with hope. Thank you for filling us with joy. Thank you for filling us with peace in your presence. Father, we thank you. And in Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. This morning, just like we normally do here at the Elevation Church, we just want to take time out to pray for people. It's your birthday month. It's your wedding anniversary month. God did something special for you in the month of April that you can never forget. That is the time to give thanks to God again. You see, when we give God thanks, he does more to us. So if it's your birthday month, if it's your wedding anniversary month, God did something spectacular to you in the month of April. And every April, you can't but remember what God has done. So I want you to just, we pray for you. Father, we thank you for this once. Father, we thank you for all bad days in the month of April. We thank you for all wedding anniversaries in the month of April. Lord, you will yet continue to bless them. Lord, this month we pray, give someone a birthday present. Give someone a birthday present. Establish them in your will. Establish them. In, your, in the purpose that you have called them for in the mighty name of Jesus. And in the same vein, we pray for all marriages. Strengthen marriages at this time. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, increase commitments of spouses to one another. Bless children. Bless homes. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, and all who have trust you for something or who have received something from you in the month of April we pray that that thing increase you are the one that does things and it remains forever Lord that thing will be a source of joy forever unto this once in the mighty name of Jesus in Jesus precious name we have prayed in Jesus precious name we have prayed I want to welcome everyone to this first Sunday in the month of April it's Thanksgiving just relax and enjoy God God is going to meet you wherever you are. In your living room, in your study, in the bedroom, wherever you are watching this service online, God will definitely meet you there. You are welcome. You are welcome. Please, if this is your first time ever of joining us online at all, just go into the chat room and signify. Someone is going to chat you up and want to take your details and intimate you with some more things that we have for you online okay now it's time let's just give our offering yeah as we speak now something is being displayed on your screen the different methods for which you can give here at the elevation church our offering is our gift to god is our mode of worship to god and every time we gather we want to worship god with our offerings our tithes and givings so i want you to just begin to go ahead take the short codes if you are on the international scene the a thing is displayed on your screen right now. Pick the account number. Go to our online elevationng.org slash giving and explore all that avenue. Okay? And as we give to God, God indeed will take those blessings, remember them, and multiply it back in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. If it's okay, let's just pray together to bless the offering. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Your word says we should not come into your presence empty. And we have not come empty. Lord, as we give at every platform online, short codes, using our cards everywhere. Father, we pray that as this offerings leaves our bank accounts, Lord, let it not let the effect not leave our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. As these offerings are to grow your kingdom. And as your kingdom grows, Lord, grow our lives, grow our investments, grow our businesses in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus precious name we pray.
In Jesus' precious name we pray. You're welcome to this service. I uh, just want you to intimate you again as our online service, as we've been doing in the past few days in our online service. Please gather your family together. At the end of this service, at the end of the word session, there's going to be a communion. So remember, gather all your communion elements together and partake it with the family. And as you partake of that communion, God will do wondrous, wondrous thing in your life. To take us on further in the service, you are going to see some testimony, and then Elevation Priest of Praise will give up some special song. So just relax and enjoy God's presence. I want to testify to God's faithfulness and healing over the life of my daughter. This year did not start out well for her, but God came through just when I needed him to. My dad had a Thanksgiving reception on the 5th of January after returning to Nigeria from Dubai, where he underwent a spinal surgery. My daughter was outside the house playing with other kids who came with their parents while I was indoors attending to guests. At a point when I was having a conversation with my elder brother, my auntie needed his attention and called him out of the room. I followed, only for me to hear screams of my daughter outside. A relative accosted me and asked that I go back inside and I wondered why. I resisted and went outside, only to see a large crowd gathered and carrying my daughter whose leg I saw was badly bruised due to a car accident just outside the house. I was livid and angered as to why nobody wanted me to know. My brother and I took her immediately to the hospital where she got treatment. For the next two to three weeks, she was moved around with assistance since she could not walk. I felt really bad seeing her in so much pain and wished that I could take the pain away and lay it upon myself. I prayed and asked God for speedy healing and just when she was recovering and starting to walk again, rashes that I could not explain started appearing all over her skin. Very big, pus-like rashes accompanied with severe itching. I was so sad, depressed and crying at the slightest opportunity because my daughter was going through a lot and I wondered why her so early in the year. I had never joined the 21 days fast, but this year I proposed to be a part of it. I kept on praying, fasting, and trusting God for speedy healing. Pastor Bola Rinwa, during one of the Saturday meetings asked us to pray, O oh Lord, let the evidence of my work with you silence the voice of my accusers and detractors. I turned it around to say, O oh Lord, let the evidence of my work with you during this season of fast bring healing upon my daughter. Upon seeing a dermatologist, she was diagnosed to have an autoimmune disease called Prurigo nodularis and was told that the rashes would take 6 months to 12 months to clear out. I prayed and asked God to clear it all before her 7th birthday which was on the 27th of February. 6 days to her birthday, more rashes came up and I couldn't recognize my daughter again. To the glory of God, I don't know how it happened but on the day of her birthday, all rashes had dried up and cleared. I don't know how it happened, but God did it. Thank you, Jesus. Receive grace and the help, the marvelous help of God to push through in the name of Jesus.
baby, now you be my helper. Father, we ask that you receive our worship today. We lift up our voices and our hands in every place where people are gathered to worship you this first Sunday of the month of April. We've gathered to worship you, to celebrate you. We ask that you receive our worship, receive our praise. They all belong to you. Good God, with whom all things are possible. We thank you for your goodness your mercy that are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. We are grateful for bringing us into another month. We thank you for your goodness and we thank you for your mercy. We thank you because in the midst of it all, you have proven yourself to be a good God, to be a faithful God. We return all the glory to you today. We ask that you accept our worship and our praise. We bless you, our Father. Take all the glory, take all the praise. And we ask that as we go into your word today, breathe upon your word. Let it minister grace to every hearer. In every city, every home, every nation where people are gathered to partake of your word, locate everyone in the place of need. Let no one be the same again. Cause healings to spring forth. Cause the oil of joy to spring forth. Cause the garment of praise to rest upon somebody today. If there's anyone who is downcast right now, as we preach and teach your word this day, let there be an outpouring of the spirit of comfort. Let healing spring forth. Let grace be released. Where the word of the king is, there is power. Let your power ride upon your word. Prosper this word. Make it a blessing. And let your name be glorified. We pray for everyone, again, who is celebrating birthday in the month of April, wedding anniversary, and anything of joy. Let their joy know no bound. Preserve them to see your goodness in the land of the living. Let no one be cut short in their prime. Let this plague pass over everyone and let your name be glorified. Thank you, our Father, in Jesus' precious name. And if you're blessed to be joining this service today, I want you to put your hands together wherever you are right now. Let God know that you are grateful for being alive at this time. Praise God. Praise the name of Jesus. I want to welcome everybody, especially uh, to this service. 
I know that God who began a good work in you is already perfecting it. It will perfect your joy, perfect your peace, and uh, meet you at every point of need this season in Jesus' precious name. Uh, as we draw closer to Easter, God will perfect all that concerns you, and you're going to celebrate Easter this year in joy, even uh, or in spite of all that is happening around our world. I want uh, us to dive into the Word of God straight right now. Uh, if, you, if you have your Bibles, please join me in Hebrews chapter 11. We're still on uh, the teaching series, Beyond Ordinary. God is doing extraordinary things this season. And as we awaken our faith, as we strengthen our faith, we're going to be a major partaker of the things that God is doing this season. Uh, and one of the greatest things that can happen to anyone is to partake in what God is doing at every material point in time. The Bible says that uh, darkness may cover the heart and gross darkness is the, the people, but God will make his light to shine upon us. Even in the midst of the pandemic and all that, God has a purpose for every season. And as you align yourself and you choose to walk by faith this season, you see that the things that God, only God can do are the things that will start to happen in your life. Today, I've titled my sharing, Grow Your Faith. Can you hear me tell anyone around you, whether adults or children, tell them, it's time to grow your faith. Grow your faith. Grow your faith. That's what I've titled this. And it's still in line with the series, Beyond the Ordinary. But this one is titled, Grow Your Faith. Uh, Hebrews 11. I will recap from Hebrews 11, uh, verse 1 and 2. Uh, just as a way of recap, the Bible says, Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, hoped for the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good testimony. And like I've been saying for the past few weeks, if you need a good testimony, this is the best time to trust God for a good testimony. Uh, it, it will be a good testimony that uh, in, uh, uh, in it all, God kept you from the plague. It will be a good testimony to say, uh, uh, though uh, uh, I was down, but I'm not out. You know, Paul said we're cast down but not destroyed, persecuted, but not abandoned. Uh, and we're always carrying in our body the mark of our Lord Jesus Christ. So it's a, it be a good testimony this season for you to be able to say that God has met me at every point of need. It will be a good testimony this season to say, uh, though everywhere is dark and gloomy, but the oil of joy is always in my heart. The garment of praise is always upon me, and the peace of God has guarded my heart and mind. By faith, we can obtain a good testimony. We can obtain a testimony of victory in all that we go through. And you remember last Sunday, I asked a question uh, that if Jesus should appear to you like he did uh, to the two blind men in the book of Matthew chapter 9, from, um, when you read around verse 29, uh, the scripture says, Jesus uh, uh, asked them, do you believe I can do this? And they said, yes, we believe. And Jesus said, let it be unto you according to your faith. Message translation says, uh, become what you believe. One of the reasons why you need to walk by faith this season is that if Jesus should appear to you right now and say, let it be unto you according to your faith or become what you believe, what will you become? Will you become sick immediately because you have been afraid of sickness? Or will you just be healed like they were healed immediately? Will you become an emotional wreck because you have been caught in, uh, um, you know, all kinds of fear emotionally and you have been filled with anxiety and worry? I pray for you today. That your faith will no longer fail in the precious name of Jesus. So also, as a way of recap, we have said that faith is an assurance, a substance. It's something that you stand on that makes you solid. And that if you are standing on something, it means you are standing against certain things. Faith is the anchor that makes you to be able to stand against certain things. And you stand against them and resist them steadfast. Also, we said faith is the evidence, evidence. We said in the law court, the burden of proof is always on uh, the defendant to say, look, these are the evidences that I have that this happened or this did not happen. And our evidence uh, uh, is, is based on the precedents that we have in the scriptures about what God has done in time past. So my faith becomes more solid when I can say the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob will not lie. The God who delivered David from Goliath will not lie. 
the one who delivered Daniel from the lion's den will not lie. That's the, those are the evidences that we have in the scriptures. And I, we also talked about the evidence of things that happen to current day saints. Current day saints. So if there's pain in your body, but you know, you remember the testimony of his sister that God healed from cancer, then you have an evidence that the God who healed this person can heal me also. The one who paid the price on the cross of Calvary, who says, uh, the scripture says, by his stripes we were healed. We are not just healed right now, we were healed when he paid the price. That same God is still alive and well. He's still alive and well. So precedence written uh, in the scriptures about, uh, about money, about marriage, about conflict. Many things that the Bible, you know, had something to say about. If he's married, but the Bible has something to say about it. If it's uh, conflict, the Bible has something to say about it. So when you go through situations of life, the evidence that we need to present before God and before the devil are the things that happen in the Bible that we can leverage and say, because this happened, uh, uh, the Bible says, for instance, the, uh, uh, in Genesis, I think Genesis 27 or so, uh, Isaac sowed in the land, and in the same year, reaped a hundredfold. And the Philistines envied him, and there was conflict. But God saw him through until he got to Rehoboth, and he overcame all the conflict. So when I'm going through conflict right now, the evidence of my faith is that God is faithful, and God can resolve conflict by a stroke of favor. Say amen, somebody. Because when you live like that, then you get to that point where your faith will no longer fail because it's not just based on optimism, like I handed last Sunday. Uh, it's not just a good idea. It's not just being positive, but it's foundly, uh, firmly founded on the word of God that lives and abides forever. Let me add a few more to it today. One is that faith is very pleasing to God. Why do I need to grow my faith? Because faith is very pleasing to God. There's no good time to be pleasing to God than this time that we live in. Even this perilous time. This is a good time to be pleasing to God. And the Bible says in Hebrews 11 and verse 6, it said, without faith, it is impossible to please God. It's impossible to please God. Impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. In our lives generally, we always love to please certain people. Husbands love to please, please their wives, especially if you're a good husband. <laughs> wives love to please their husband if you're a good wife. In the same vein, employees love to please their employers. If, I mean, for certain reasons of bonuses and goodwill and all that. Uh, I, I hope you're, you're getting what I'm saying. So in the world, we love to please certain people. When a guy is toasting a babe, or uh, permit the use of the word, when a guy <laughs> is trying to get the attention of a young lady, uh, they try to do certain things to please them, to get their attention. But some Christians feel that I don't need to do anything to please God. No, if the Bible says, if you want to get God's attention, approach him by faith. Let your heart be filled with faith. You're going to get attention. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. How do you then want to get something from someone that you have not made any attempt to please? Are you still with me today? It means when I'm conscious of my faith work, I'm building my faith and growing in faith, I'm doing it because I know that it is necessary for me to be able to be the kind of person that will please God. When you go back into Hebrews 11, from verse 7, the Bible started to talk about people who pleased God by faith. God was so delighted in them. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things yet not seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of righteousness, which is according to faith. Is faith moving on time to obey God, pleased God so much, he became the heir of righteousness. The same thing with Abraham in verse 8 there. By faith, uh, the Bible says, by faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. He went out, not, the father was just going. Without knowing where he was going, 
as he was taking steps, um, it was delighting the heart of God. <laughs> it, 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 you know, he took one step and it was a delight to God. Ah, says, see Abraham, he's moving, oh, he's going. He's actually going. He's actually obeying me. Uh, you, you can imagine how it gladdens the heart of God that a man will stake his destiny on God's divine instruction and move just because God said move. Every step was a delight. Every step was a delight to God. Will you say that you're taking steps this season that, that, that are bringing delight to the heart of God? Because God is pleased by every faith action, by every faith move that we make. Faith pleases God. Pleases God. Makes God, you know, to, to, to rejoice and know that there are still people who honor him. Also, I want to add this to it, that faith is like a living being. It can grow. It can grow. So you don't have to be stuck at one level of faith. Faith can grow. You should be growing in your faith uh, because as we live in life, we'll face greater level of challenges. And if you need your faith to guarantee victory in life, it means that you must not get stuck at one level of faith. First John 5 and verse 4, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. If my faith is what positions me to overcome the world, it means from time to time, I must pay attention to that faith. For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. Somebody say, my faith positions me to overcome the world. So I will pay attention to my faith. It's very important that I pay attention to my faith, my level of faith, so that I can know that my faith is growing to be able to match up with the challenges that will come my way. I tell people, when you are single, there's a level of faith that you need to overcome all the issues that come with singlehood. Yeah, from meeting your personal needs uh, to abstaining from what displeases God, you know, to another. When you get married, there are added challenges that you need a higher level of faith to deal with. And that, that's how it ramps up from time to time. It ramps up when you are younger. That's a level of faith that you need. Yeah. When you are older, as you grow older, that's another level of faith that you need. For instance, there are diseases that are, you know, that are more likely to happen to people as they go into 40s, 50s, 60s. If you don't know how to release your faith in the days of your youth, when you can just shake off anything, when you grow older, how are you going to cope? Because doctors will tell you at this age, you are expected to have X, Y, Z. You need to be able to say, no, that's not my portion. Yeah. My faith overcomes the world, including sicknesses and diseases. Yeah. My faith can overcome sickness and diseases. And my age notwithstanding, I believe that God can make me free of this sickness and that sickness. But you can only say that boldly when you have taken responsibility for growing your faith. According to the word of God, Jesus alluded to the fact that your faith can be little, it can be weak, it can be strong, and it can be great. Those are the different words that Jesus, you know, adjective that Jesus used to describe our faith. Oh, ye of little faith. Yeah. They, 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 they were in the boat. The boat was about sinking. The wind and the wave was mysterious. Jesus was sleeping. And then they went to wake him up. Yeah. And he said, Carest not doubt that we perish. And when he looked at them, he said, How come you have no faith? Or how come you have a little faith? How come your faith was useless and you cannot handle this storm and this wind? That's the summary of what Jesus was telling them. Or was it when they were supposed to cast out a demon from uh, an epileptic young man, they could not say, how come you cannot cast him out? And Jesus said, it's because your faith was, was small. And at the fig tree, in Mark 11, Peter said, Master, the fig tree that you caused yesterday has dried up. And Jesus looked at them and said, if you have faith, the size of a monster seed, you will say. Yeah. So we can look at faith from the measure perspective. You can also look at faith from the condition perspective. Faith can be weak and it can be strong. That's condition of your faith. Faith can be small, which cannot move a fly, or 
you know, completely weak and powerless. And faith, Jesus said, can be strong or great. Great faith. And um, all through the scriptures, we see Jesus, like I said, just talking about our faith in different ways. And when we look at Romans chapter 12 also, the Bible talks about the fact in verse 3 that God has dealt with each and every one of us the measure of faith. The measure of faith. And this scripture, knowing that it was not written to everybody, to believers, Paul, I mean, the writer of the book of Romans was writing to believers. And in Romans chapter 12 and verse number 3, he said, For I say to you, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt with each one a measure of faith. The more appropriate way to put it is the measure of faith, if you look into the ori original Greek rendition, is to be the measure of faith. Because when you say a measure, it means that somebody could have been given, uh, if you measure it like liquid, somebody could have been given one liter. Where another person was given five liters. Another person has 50 liters. No. The measure of faith, it means that God has dealt with each and every one of us a particular level of faith because uh, you couldn't have gotten saved without faith. Yeah. It's by faith, uh, uh, the Bible says, by, by grace we are saved through faith. And that not of yourself, it was of God. So at salvation, we all were given the measure of faith. The Bible uh, is very is replete with all kinds of assertions to the fact that we must not stay at that level of faith that we started with at salvation. I want to tell anyone around you, tell them you have the measure of faith. Say, God gave you when you became saved, when you gave your life to Christ. Yeah, when you receive the gift of righteousness, you also receive the gift of faith. The capacity to believe God was given to you. It started with you becoming sober and accepting that you were a sinner, needing a savior. So you had faith in Christ to save you and you gave your life to him. But you need to build on that as you go, as you develop, as you walk in faith. Our faith grows. Let's get into that. Our faith grows. Now that we have established that faith can be weak, it can be strong, it can be little, it can be great, and we all have a measure of faith, let's look at how faith grows. One, faith grows by worship. Worship is our first calling. And faith grows by worship. Worship is our first calling. These people have I made for myself they will give me worship. So which is the, 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 the first commandment, I mean, the, the, the first of all the commandments says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your, uh, your, your might, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. God wants my heart. But much more than that, an atmosphere of faith is very necessary around your life from time to time. And when we get into the place of worship, it has a way of just overcrowding my doubt. Sometimes you start to worship God and praise God. You don't even know why you're worshiping and praising. But before you know it, something starts to happen to your heart. And as it happens to your heart, you just realize that your doubt is reducing and your faith is being ignited. You know, sometimes you spend time in worship and be before you are done, you're already hearing God. And faith comes by hearing. And hearing by both the spoken word and the written word. Abraham's faith was anchored on what he heard from God. Go out of here and go to a specific place. And God said, I, I'll, I'll just go. I, I'm going with you. Sometimes when we spend time in worship, especially corporate worship, we start to feel differently about the situations of life. Anxiety starts to dissipate from us. And then we start to hear God a little more clearly. And then faith starts to grow in our heart. That's why this season, you, you, you shouldn't uh, over-separate yourself. Online, with a few other people, on Facebook group, with one or two people, make sure within your family that you still worship together and live the name of Jesus together with other believers. Don't isolate yourself spiritually. 
You can isolate physically, but don't isolate spiritually because God wants to do something new in your life by uh, ventilating your, your, your faith for expression, and it happens in the place of worship. Faith grows by worship. Faith grows by worship. The Bible says in Romans 4 and, and verse, verse uh, 19 and 20, can you put that up for me? Romans 4, 19 and 20, talking about Abraham. Uh, the Bible says, and not being weak in faith, look at that again, weak faith. <laughs> it said, not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already, weak, already dead since he was about 100 years old. And the deadness of Sarah's womb. Look at verse 20. He did not waver at the promises of God through unbelief, but he was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. How did Abraham uh, continually strengthen his faith? By giving glory to God. Even, I mean, though the child Isaac was, uh, has not yet come, Sarah had not conceived, but Abraham continually gave glory to to God and his faith was strengthened. May God strengthen your faith this season. I cannot get your amen. Yeah, may God strengthen your faith this season. But it starts with you consistently giving glory to God. Faith dies off gradually in an atmosphere of unbelief, tension, fear, and animosity. And when you, when you, <laughs> when you ventilate your heart with worship, with praise, all those atmospheres start to dissipate around your life. Atmosphere of fear, of you know, animosity, and all that. All those things start to dissipate around your life. And you just see that faith is being built up. The, the, the atmosphere becomes conducive to trust, to obey, to understand the word of God. That's what we're talking about. Secondly, faith grows through hearing and reading the word of God. Romans 10 and 17, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. When you, like I said before, when you create an atmosphere... Where the word of God can come to you freely. Whether the spoken word or, or the, the, the word recorded that you are hearing. Or God himself speaking to you expressly. Faith starts to build in your heart. So when you spend time hearing the word, reading the word, this season, you see that faith will start to grow in your heart. Joshua 1, 8, scripture says, this book of the law shall not depart from your heart. Yeah, but you shall meditate in it day and night. How often? Day and night. This book of the law, when, uh, in, 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 the, in the dispensation of grace and New Testament, so uh, the word of God can be used in exchange for what he calls the book of the law there. Yeah, so it, it says, this book of the law shall not depart from your heart, but you shall meditate in it day and night. <laughs> Joshua, Israel, if you want victory this season, you need to meditate on the word of the Lord day and night so that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. The same word I'm speaking to everyone. Everyone joining this service today from whatever city, whatever nation uh, that you're joining from. I need to look at everyone around you and tell them it's time to meditate on the word of God. So that your faith can grow. Yeah. Call the name of your neighbor and tell them. Uh, uh, <laughs> tell somebody. Tell Linda. Say, Linda, it's time to meditate on the word of God. So that your faith can grow. It's time to read the word. To listen to the word. To understand the word. Let not the word of God depart from your mouth. Say it. Hear it. Ruminate on it. Make it day and night. Especially... If you don't have much, do, much doing this season, there's a time to pay attention more to the word of God so that your faith can grow. Uh, thirdly, faith grows by taking steps of faith in doing the work that God has called you to do. Taking steps of faith, doing the work that God has called you to do. There are certain demands that God places on us to exercise our faith muscles and to take steps. Sometimes, it's just spending time in prayer. It builds your faith. You finish praying. You just realize that uh, something is happening to your faith. Look at James chapter 2, when you read from verse 18 there. It said, but someone will say, you have faith and I have works. It said, show me your faith uh, without your works, and I will show you my faith with my works. When I sit down with the world, when I do something nice to someone, when I, when I obey God, 
I am developing my faith. There's no way your faith can grow to attract a level of favor when God cannot get you to give somebody that, uh, a measure of favor. There's no way your faith can grow to believe God for a certain amount of money if God cannot speak to you to give someone else or to give to his kingdom a certain amount of money. Because when I obey, I'm exercising my faith. Yeah. Judging God faithful, that he has, that has given me a word, that spoke to me, is able to fulfill that word. It's able to fulfill that word. So when I obey the word of God, I'm exercising my faith. When I do the works, I'm exercising my faith. Uh, I mean, you see there, if you go to the, 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 the other verses there, it said, you believe that there's one God, you do well. Even demons believe and they tremble. <laughs> but you, you, you want to know, oh foolish man, that faith without works is dead. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? He said, you believe. He said, even demons believe and they tremble. But if they, if they refuse to do the right thing, they will not get anything. And Abraham did the right thing. He balanced his faith with his works. When, I mean, how do you think Abraham felt? Trying to obey God to sacrifice his son. Lord, I believe that you're going to fulfill your words in my life. But God said, uh, that child that you have waited for for so long, I need you to sacrifice that child for me. How is this going to happen if the only real legitimate child that I have, you want to take it, take him, and yet you see, say, you will fulfill your word. God said, go ahead. Yeah. God said, go ahead, because you're, you're, you grow your faith by exercising obedience to the word of God. And sometimes it's going to be tough. Sometimes it's not going to be easy. Uh, but that's the only way we grow our faith muscles. Say amen, somebody. As a round off today, I love to challenge your faith. Challenge your faith by giving you uh, an idea to work on, something more than an idea, something that will strengthen your faith and take your faith to the next level. And I, I want to round off with this. And I call it the making of great faith. The making of great faith. Matthew chapter 8, when you read from verse 5. The scripture talks about the story of the encounter that the centurion had with Jesus Christ. And uh, this is perhaps one place in the scriptures that Jesus expressly saw someone's faith and called it great faith. Yeah. So what is the making of great faith? You know, we've talked about all kinds of faith here today. But what's the making of great faith? In Matthew chapter 8 from verse 5, the Bible says, Now when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. I mean, he was, uh, as a good savior, he said, I will just come and heal him. But look at what happened. Uh, uh, verse 8, the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. <laughs> look at verse 9. For I also, then the, the guy went ahead to explain where he got the idea from. He said, I have a concept of what is going on here. And let me explain it to you. This is how I got the idea. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. This guy said, Jesus, you know what? I understand how these things work. You can speak to sickness or to a demon spirit or to a spirit of infirmity, and they will obey you. Because I speak, I give orders also. I have a conceptual understanding of how this thing works. And based on that, I believe you don't have to come into my house. Look at verse 10. <laughs> when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed him, As surely I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. So, we can sum it up today by saying... That great faith is born out of conceptual understanding. Great faith stems from your conceptual understanding of God, especially in a specific dimension of life. 
in the area of sicknesses and diseases and speaking to spirit of infirmity, the centurion had a conceptual understanding of how it works in the spirit. When he described it, not even being a Jew, when he described it, Jesus said, this is great faith. And from there, we can say that for you to demonstrate great faith, you need a conceptual understanding of how things work or a conceptual understanding of God in a specific dimension of life. I'm going to give a few examples. In a specific dimension of life, but I'm going to give a few examples. So, some faith defining dimensions of God. I, I, I want you to see in the chart up there. Yeah, in this chart. Look at, let me give you an example. Psalm 23. David had a conceptual understanding of God as the great shepherd. So in Psalm 23, he says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Because I know him as a shepherd, I can say that I shall not want. Even when my account, bank account is empty and in red. But because I know that he is a great shepherd. Just like the centurion said, I know you are in the spirit more than a centurion. You can give orders to spirit of infirmities and they will obey you. When David uh, front-loaded the understanding of a great shepherd, when you, I mean, reading about him, you will know that he never lacked. Before I was young, now I'm old, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg for bread. That was the same person, just, you know, just saying that. No, it's, it's an understanding that you have. What, what's your conceptual understanding when it comes to divine guidance? When you know God as a shepherd, then you know that even when you're in a critical situation, you have to make a decision, you are relaxed because you know you have a connection with the great shepherd. Uh, when it comes to uh, seeing him as great provider, it's the same thing. Paul, in Philippians chapter 4, was, in verse 9, was just saying, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus because you have done the right thing. You have done the works of faith. You are sent to meet my necessity. And the Bible says, God gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater and no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. On the premise of that and the conceptual understanding that Paul has about God, he spoke over the church in, in the book of Philippians who sent in provision and said that God, who is a great provider, will supply all your need. He will supply all your need. When it comes to healing, you need a conceptual understanding of God as a great healer. Exodus chapter 15 and verse 26, God said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Jehovah Rapha, the one who heals us. If I know him like that, I don't care whatever sickness, I have a conceptual understanding of the great work of atonement in the New Testament that Jesus did. Hung on the cross, paid the price. By his stripes, we were healed. So, I, I may be feeling a symptom in my body. <laughs> symptom notwithstanding. By his stripes, not now, long before I've been healed. That healing has no choice than to manifest. It may take hours. It may even take a few days, but it's going to manifest because somebody paid the price for it. Say amen, somebody. When you have such conceptual understanding, you demonstrate what Christ described as great faith. If you need comfort this season, know him as a great comforter. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse number 3. 2 Corinthians 1 and verse 3. He is the great comforter. The Bible says, blessed be God. Paul writing here to the church at Corinth. Blessed be God, the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of mercy. And the God of all comfort. <laughs> if you know him as the God of all comfort. Look at verse 4 there. He said, who comforts us in all our tribulation. I don't know what tribulation you're going through right now. Maybe career-wise. Maybe maritally. The Bible says he's the one that comforts us in all of our tribulation. That we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble. With the comfort with which uh, uh, we ourselves are comforted by God. Do you know God as the great comforter? Because if you know him as a great comforter, you will be able to release your faith for comfort. When things, you know, are difficult and you see the great comforter come through for you. He is the great father. The great father. First John 3 and verse 1. Behold what manner of love the father, the father has given to us. 
that we should be called sons of God. And he said, if your earthly fathers, who are evil, when you ask them for bread, they don't give you stone. He said, how do you then think that I, the father of all grace, the father of mercy, would go lower than that? He's a great lover. <laughs> Last day today, the great lover. With the, 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 the great lover. Psalm 86 and verse number 5. Look at the description there in Psalm 86 and verse number 5. Can you put it up for me? It says, for you, Lord, you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive. Even if I stop there, it's okay. Ready, ever ready to forgive. And abundant in mercy to all those who call upon you. It is also a psalm of David. David has such, you know, concepts of God in different areas. And those concepts endeared him to God. That's why God will call David, you know, a special person, a special friend, because he had different concepts about God. What is your concept about God when it comes to God meeting your needs, meeting the need, your, your health need, meeting your need for shelter, meeting your need in different areas of life, meeting your need for a marital partner? What is your concept of God? Have you gathered scriptures? Have you gotten an understanding of who he is? Because that shapes and conceptualizes your faith so that you develop a great faith that can touch heaven and touch the heart of God. So what's your concept or your conceptual understanding of God in these times? These times that we're living in, what is your conceptual understanding of God? Are you seeing him as a God who shields his own people from any kind of plague? Or is your faith saying, we're all going to die? Nothing like that. Because in Egypt, there were loads of plagues. But God shielded his own people. And when the plagues were over, they walked into abundance. And they crossed out of slavery into freedom. Lift your hands wherever you are right now. And bless the God who is the Father. Who is the Shepherd. Who is the Great Provider. The one who is always there for us. The one who comforts us in all of our tribulations. Oh Jesus, we worship you today. Why don't you just bless him? Just bless him. Just bless him. I don't know what concept has, uh, you know, or come to you today as I was teaching. Why don't you worship him from that conceptual understanding? Call him the name. The great healer. Great provider. Shepherd of your soul. Somebody pray in the spirit. Worship him in the spirit. And just bless him. Just thank him. Father, we thank you. We thank you, great provider. We thank you, lover of our soul. We thank you, healer, deliverer. We thank you, strong tower. We thank you, the Lord, our righteousness. Because you are our righteousness, sin can no longer harass us. Condemnation can no longer plague us. Guilt can no longer plague our minds. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you do. We sing of your greatness and of your mercy today. Wave your hands to him everywhere, every household, wherever you're joining from. Let God know that you, 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 you know him in a different way. Thank you, Father. We worship you in the spirit today. We bless your name. We bless your name. We give you glory. We give you praise. Ibra do so pre ikatusha and eligebosha. Receive our worship. We bless you. Holy God, righteous God, faithful God, merciful Father. That's who you are. Let someone's faith be energized today. In the name of Jesus, will you just pray in one minute and say, Lord, strengthen my faith. Pour out your grace upon me. Give me a conceptual understanding as I study your word this season. Help me to understand you in this area of life where I have a struggle right now. Help me to know you the way David of old knew you and called you specific names that capture the understanding that he has of you. Thank you, everlasting Father. As we lift our prayers to you all around the place today, as people watch from everywhere, let people's faith be strengthened. Let prayers be answered. Let sicknesses go. 
In the name of Jesus, we speak to pain to go. We decree instead of despair, the spirit of comfort is coming over someone today. Instead of guilt and condemnation, we receive the peace of God, the divine assurance that God is with us. He is a merciful, merciful Father. He doesn't hold us by our deeds. He forgives. Lord, as your people ask for forgiveness today, we ask that you move into every heart. Let your blood prevail. Let your mercy prevail. If there's anyone right now joining with this service whose heart is plagued with condemnation and guilt, Jesus, you pay the price. You are the propitiation for our sin so that the devil will no longer hold us back. So I pray that the hold of guilt and condemnation is broken over somebody's heart right now. I speak peace into that marriage. I declare right now an hand has come to animosity in your home. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we bind the spirit of violence in that house. We command you, go in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you for new ideas. Thank you for a flow of your favor as we go into a new month. Let this month be filled with favor for someone. Let our steps be ordered. Let healing come. Let grace be released. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. Before we partake of the communion, I love to pray for someone joining this service today who may be saying, Pastor, I don't know Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior. I want to receive Jesus into my heart. The question I love to ask you is if Jesus should come today, right now, Will he be able to say to you, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of your Lord? Or will he say, I know you not? If you can't categorically say yes, he will say, I know you. Then you need to say this prayer with me. So you need to be able to say, Pastor, I'm a honest person. I know that if Jesus should come right now, I can't make it with him. If that is your story, I want you to be a part of this prayer. Whether you have said this prayer before or not, as you say it again today, Christ will come into your heart. It will break the hold of guilt and condemnation from your heart and you will enjoy a new beginning. Whatever you may be watching from, can you put your hand on your heart and let's say this prayer together. Say after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. So I ask that you forgive me my sins and that you cleanse me from every unrighteousness. I accept you today as my Lord and my personal Savior. Fill my heart with your spirit. Give me a new beginning from this moment forward. I willingly release my life to you. Thank you for accepting me in Jesus' name. Let me say a prayer. Father, we thank you for everyone who just said a prayer. Let your grace keep them. Let your love be shed abroad in their heart. And let your spirit start to indwell them from this moment forward. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Just before... We bring the service to a close for everyone who just said a prayer. Can I uh, encourage you to go into the chat room or whatever platform you, you're joining from to let us know you just made a decision. Uh, um, let us know how we can also reach you to be a part of your life, to keep encouraging you and sending you materials that will help you. And if you have a prayer request, please feel free to also drop your prayer request. Uh, you know, just DM us. Or if you're watching on a pl platform that has a chat room, please go right now and let us know the decision that you're making. Uh, and God will bless you as you do so in Jesus' name. Uh, uh, we we'll love to share the communion together, which we've been doing for weeks right now. I want you to put the materials together, whatever you have at home, biscuit, bread, uh, wafer, uh, you know, or, uh, water, juice, whatever you have. Uh, let's uh, remember uh, that Christ died on the cross of Calvary, and because of his death and resurrection, we are able to live in newness of life. And as we partake of this today, we use that point of contact to whatever everyone has together with them where they are right now. We declare, declare Jesus, this is your body that was broken for us and your blood that was shed for us. As we partake of the communion today, we decree grace comes upon everything that people have with them right now. We do this in remembrance of you. We ask that the power of the cross be released as we partake. Let there be healings, let there be restoration of joy, of peace, of divine direction, 
Let the heavens open over every household and over every life. Let the effect of the plague be destroyed. Let peace visit every city, every nation. Let there be restoration. Whatever anyone may have lost, let there be restoration. Let the month of April be filled with peace, with joy, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Please go ahead and partake. Praise God. Lift your hands to Jesus everywhere as you partake and just bless him. Just bless him for his goodness, for his mercy. Our God is good. And the Bible says his mercy is endure forever. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We bless you. Go ahead and just bless him as you partake of the communion. And you can also raise your prayers, your petition to God today. Thank you, everlasting Father. Father, we bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. And so, our Father, we thank you for your presence in every location. We thank you for your grace. Thank you as we move into this new month because your peace and your favor go with us as we go in the month of April. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. And everyone says amen. Praise God. Before we bring the service to a close, we're going to take a further announcement uh, and we'll bring the service to a close. But I just want to quickly say this, that you should keep joining us in all of our platforms. We also have uh, several broad broadcasts on many TV stations locally and internationally. Uh, you, you'll see the different guides on the screen that follow this season to watch our broadcast so that you can feed your faith and starve your doubt. This is a time to feed your faith and continue to starve your doubt. And how you do that is by the intake of the Word of God. So in the week and all through the weekend, we have broadcasts on, ev uh, on many stations that you can partake of, and that will help you grow your faith. I also want to, again, recommend the books that we're reading this season. These are three books that I've written in time past that are still very relevant to this time. Uh, one is uh, Moving from Fear to Faith, uh, which will help you to galvanize your faith at this time. The Seven Commandments of Foolishness, which is the book of wisdom. Wisdom is needed to make your faith victorious. And I Am Possible, which is another book on how uh, to release your faith individually as a person and grow in your faith. Check online. Uh, send us uh, messages at Tech Resource. We'll be able to get these resources available to you. Uh, the Seven Commandments of Foolishness are available on Amazon. Uh, you can look out for it. Uh, get the e-copy and it promises to be a blessing to you. Praise God. Have a great week. But before you go, let's receive Pastor Bola Adisa as he uh, leads us in the benediction and give a few announcements. God bless you. Praise the Lord. What such an awesome word from our lead pastor. God bless you, sir. Okay. Um, just before we bring the service to a close, for all our guests, the person first time joining us online, um, we welcome you again. And we hope that you keep coming back to enjoy service with us online in this season. Paradventure, you joined us while we are, after we are taking our offering. Please, we'll enjoy us to just look on your screen now. Um, the different ways that we give here at the Elevation Church is displayed on the screen. Take advantage of God, uh, of that, and let God receive your worship, okay? Also, just like our lead pastor had mentioned, uh, we take our service on, on the midweek service. Join us on Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. online. And we will be there to worship God together and listen to God's word together. And normally we normally bring our service to a close by speaking God's word to ourselves. We speak God's word from Psalms chapter 1 and from verses 1 to 3. I want you to join me. Say it like you mean it. Say it as if... All the words that you say will happen in your life. Okay? Join me and let's go. Blessed am I, for I walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the comfort. But my delight is in the word of the Lord, and in his word I meditate day and night. I am like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Leaves also shall not wither, and whatsoever I do shall prosper.
prosper. Go prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. Thanks for joining us for service today. We trust you had a wonderful time. Our next service holds on Wednesday by 6.30 p.m. West African time and will stream live on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Ensure you follow us or subscribe to our social media channels at Elevation NG so that you can get service alerts. Please check our website elevationng.org daily for updates about our activities, especially with regards to the coronavirus outbreak. You can also contact us via email at info at elevationng.org or give us a call on 0700-ELEVATE. That's 0700 Be safe and remember that you are fortified. God bless you and have a great week.